Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Sunset Beach Dance and I'm sipping on some vanilla chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, fire red, chrome yellow, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and Mars black. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing, and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and a number three round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and style of canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint the sky. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are blue, white, red, rust, and yellow. If I use any other colors, I'll let you know, but that's where my head is going right now, how I'm going to create this. So I'm going to have my sky coming down about two thirds of the way down my canvas. So what I'm going to initially do is just give myself a couple of little tick marks that'll give me a visual stopping point. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of blue paint on my brush. I'm going to kind of eyeball where the halfway point is in my canvas. To find the third of the way down, what you'll do, you can either just come down a little bit from that, or you can look for your quarter way spot, and then it's somewhere in the middle of those two. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a marker there. Then I'll use my brush to measure how far down I came, and I'll come over to the other side and just give myself a little bit of a marker in a similar spot. That just visually gives me a stopping point because I know for me, as I get painting, I'm like, oh, I just want to keep painting and I go past where I <laughs> initially wanted to. So that gives me that stopping point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some blue paint on my brush. I'm going to have my sky pretty dark up at the top. I'm going to have some blue up there and then I'm going to fade it down into a lighter area in through here and then I'm going to have a lot of also darkness or red sunsetty colors down at the bottom um, of my horizon, especially on the left and the right sides of it. As I'm going through this process, I'm going to be using a very loose kind of um, blending type of brush stroke. So I've got my blue paint on my brush right now. I'm going to start up in this corner, up in through here, and all the while I'm doing this, I'm thinking I want to have these light um, soft edges that I'll be able to just kind of keep blending with neighboring colors. So I just started with my blue. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of my burnt sienna so I can get these two to kind of blend in with each other. And I'm using kind of a left to right crisscross type of motion. You could certainly use any style of brush stroke that you want. I just picked up a little bit more of my burnt sienna and my blue. Now I'm going to transition into a little bit of red 
to get a little bit of red going on in my sky. And you don't have to make yours exactly the same as mine. You can really feel free to explore whatever color palette that you want. Now on my dirty brush, I'm picking up white paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these um, darker, bluer kind of tones to just soften and lighten up a little bit as I work my way down towards that sun setty yellows and reds and oranges. So this way it transitions from that blue up at the top of the sky into a more soft region. And it also helps me to eliminate getting uh, or creating like a greenish hue to my sky because I had blue on my brush. And if I'm gonna be using yellow or any kind of variation thereof, with that blue on my brush, I'll end up with a lot of green in my sky. So this helps to transition me down into the um, into the yellows and reds without running too much of a risk of getting those blue or those green tones. Now that I've got that area in there, I'm going to start adding a lot of reds and oranges down at the bottom. So I'm picking up a red, burnt sienna and yellow on my brush at the same time. I'm going to go right across this bottom area in through here, just kind of intermingling and getting that all to connect. And then I'm going to start bringing these vibrant hues up this left and right hand side in through here. You can, again, make it as whatever color variation you want. If you want yours lighter or darker than mine, if you want more reds or more yellows, feel free to do so. But once I've got that started, now what I can do is start introducing a lot of yellow into the equation. So I just picked up some yellow. And I did it in this order just so I, I don't have difficulty kind of overlapping or blending these colors and it looks a little bit more natural in my head. Um, but again, you can have whatever variations that you want in your sky. I'm gonna be having my sun in through here. So I am gonna be incorporating quite a bit of yellow around that area. We'll be putting the sun on later so you don't have to worry about um, making that too light at this point. And then I'm just going to start picking up more white on my brush so I can get it a little bit lighter coming up in through here. And then I can just kind of transition this into this top area, whatever way is feeling most natural to me. If you feel that you have too much um, white or yellow on your brush, you could certainly wash and dry your brush. But if you can find a way to just kind of keep blending these colors, it's gonna make the whole sky look like it's naturally just working its way into each other. I'm picking up a little bit of red and white now just so I can get a little bit um, nice transition up into this part of the sky. So again, just a little bit of red and white on my brush in through there. And you might find after you get all these colors on here that you wanna add more layers to it. If you want to, feel free to do so. There's no stopping you from putting another layer onto your sky and making all this look like it's these beautiful clouds just gently rolling by. Sunsets are awesome because they can always have so many different values in them and depending on what the clouds and the atmosphere are doing, they can just look different. So feel free, like I just put a little bit more red on my brush. Maybe I want this side to be darker so I can put a red and blue on my brush and I can just turn this area into a little bit deeper color over on this left hand side. So just explore that. As these colors are drying, you can say, oh, I want a little bit more lightness over here or a little bit more darkness over there. And you just keep adding these layers. Acrylic is awesome for adding layers. Once it dries, just keep building colors upon colors. Sometimes the colors are see-through, so they'll, uh, they'll allow each other to kind of talk to each other. You'll get these lights, you know, you'll get the transition of whatever color is underneath it. So right now I'm just kind of playing with the colors. I've got blue and red on my brush. I'm putting some more deepness down at the bottom of my horizon. Maybe I'll put some more clouds up and through here. So maybe a little bit more red and blue on my brush. And then I would just keep fiddling. So at this point, I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good, but I'm gonna probably just let it dry, see if there's any more adjusting that I wanna do. And then I will um, be using this same brush for the next step. So once I've got this all on here and I've got it blended the way that I want, I'm gonna wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our water and our beach sand. 
We'll be putting the reflection of the sun on later and the little waves on the beach. But right now we're going to concentrate on doing the water and the sand for the beach. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I'm going to be using white, yellow, red, rust, and brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it a little bit lighter at the top of my water as well as where I feel that the reflection is going to take place. And then I'm going to get it to go darker and darker as I come down towards this left hand side. The beach sand is going to be kind of like in this diagonal type of section in through here. So I'm going to have my water just kind of blending into my beach sand and we're going to get it to go nice and dark down here in the bottom left. I don't want to go black yet because I'm going to be using black to make my shadows and all that good stuff on the beach. So we'll go dark, but not all the way dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. Very little white, more yellow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a quick horizon line. So I know that I already had two markers, one on the right and one on the left side that were at about the same height from the bottom of my canvas. So I can really just go quickly across with my brush and give myself a pretty straight horizon. But if you found that you um, had one side lower or higher than the other, you might want to remeasure yours. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of come straight across like this giving myself a pretty light line up towards the top um, of my horizon line or of my uh, water. And you don't have to make this 100% uh, fully executed. We're going to be putting our sun on in through here. And if you have little vacant spaces between your uh, water and your sky, we can fix that when we go to um, do our final details on the sky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of take this yellow and white. I'm going to have my sun in this area over here and it's going to be reflecting towards the sand over in through here. So I'm just going to kind of rub off the rest of my paint that I had on my brush. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and burnt sienna and I'm going to start adding that over on the sides. I'm going to get this to blend in with my yellow. I'm picking up a little bit more burnt sienna. So really what I'm, I'm looking to do is give myself some nice rich tones over on the outer edges of my water. I am going to get this to blend into the center area as well in a minute, but right now just kind of getting these dark, dark rich uh, sunset colors. Again, rust and brown are on my, I mean rust and red are on my brush right now giving myself a nice dark uh, start over on this side over here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick up some yellow now to get these to blend in. And again, I don't need it to blend 100% because I know that I've got another layer to this water coming, or at least on that reflection area. But this will help me to kind of build that reflection area in a nice natural way. So I'm just picking up yellow with my dirty brush and this is getting me to intermingle these darker edges into the brighter area in the middle of the of the water in through here. And I'm going to pick up maybe a little bit more yellow to get this to blend in a bit more over in through here. And I'm just kind of leaving a faint little um, evidence up at the top of my horizon of that lighter color. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna to get down to the bottom right of this canvas down in through here. And this is where I'm going to start in a minute intermingling my um, brown into the equation because I really want this to be my beach sand area. So, but I want it to blend in with that water as well as if the water is just kind of receding into the sand and the sand is just getting nice and dark with the with the sunset. So I just picked up brown on my dirty brush and I'm going to paint this whole bottom area over here with brown and get it to intermingle with the um, with the watercolor that we just did in through here. And I'm just using a left to right brush stroke. You could really use any type of brush stroke that is comfortable to you at this point um, to get it on here because again, we've got another, another step coming to make this look nice and real. I'm gonna put a little bit more red on my brush in through this area just so I don't bring that brown up too, too high. And then I'm just gonna kinda sit here and fiddle with it, make sure everything is talking well together, maybe a little bit more 
uh, red down in this bottom right hand area in through here just so I can make sure that I've got some really firm and bright um, sunset -y colors reflecting in that water and then we're going to be using uh, this we're actually going to use our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the sun so I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to be using are white and yellow predominantly, but I may end up going into some of my other colors of the sky just to make sure that it blends nicely. So I'm going to be having probably definitely red a little, but I'm, I'm, I'm presuming. I'm going to have my sun um, just about maybe an inch, inch and a half above my horizon line and maybe about two inches to the right of that center mark or the center of your canvas. So this is about halfway left to right on my horizon line. I'm going to come up about an inch and over about two inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a teeny bit of white paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself the area where I want my sun to be or the um, size of my sun. So I'm just going to, I put a little bit of white paint and then what I do is I just spin my brush around in a circle. So that gives me a pretty natural um, kind of faded soft edges to the sun. I will amp it up in a minute, but this just kind of gets my gets my brush going, gives me a nice circular type of look to it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. So I have yellow and white and I'm going to start uh, giving myself a lighter area around that sun. So I think I need a little bit more paint on my brush just so I can go a bit farther with this. So a little bit of yellow and white just kind of bumping into that white area that we did so that white underneath is going to um, make it nice and vibrant. Let me just put a bit more white back in the center there and then I just kind of keep elevating that brightness in the center of the sun. I definitely will um, make it a little bit more bright in a minute but I'm just trying to get the area on there that I want that kind of glow around the sun so I just picked up a bit more yellow and what I like to do is I'm just going to kind of rub it out into the neighboring um, clouds or atmosphere so this is providing me with the glow from the sun onto the neighboring clouds and and things of that nature you can really make it super bright and powerful if you want or you can make it really subtle however you're um, envisioning this reef or this effect of the sun to happen you can certainly make it happen in whatever way is feeling natural to you you can even get your sun to like sink into the clouds if you wanted to put some bright red or orange in front of the um, bottom of the sun you can do that that'll make it look like it's just kind of sinking right into the atmosphere and I'm going to put a little bit more yellow on in here just kind of playing with this yellow a bit and you can also put it up in like if you have a little cloud in through here you can get that yellow to just kind of um, glow on the edges of those. I'm going to put a tiny bit more white so this will give you that appearance that the that the sun as it's setting is just kind of illuminating some of these neighboring clouds and making you know everything just have that that bit of ex exciting atmospheric information on top of it. So I'm just kind of playing with my yellow and white and just giving myself all this fun kind of information around the sun and then you just keep fiddling with it as much as you want to. And the um, you can also put this information down elsewhere. So if you wanted to carry down some lighter areas down closer to the horizon, you can certainly do that. I'm picking up a bit of red right now just to get this to um, blend in. So red and yellow will help me just kind of get it in in a natural way as it's kind of dissipating um, on that horizon line. And then you just kind of sit back and fiddle with it. Maybe a little bit more white on the inside of my um, sun to make sure that it is as big as I want it. So I think I want it just a little bit bigger and brighter. So just adding a bit more of the white and then I like my a lot of my sons to have just kind of soft edges to them so I just take it as it's drying and just kind of rub it out 
into the area next to it. You could certainly have a super clean sun um, and have those edges really clean to it, but I like it when it's got that kind of glowy edge to it as opposed to a real clean, clean edge, but that's just a personal preference. And then once you've got this done, fiddle with it all you want. Again, if you want little bits within the, the, the atmosphere anymore, you can certainly add those into it. And then we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your sun in here and you've got it as bright and as glowy as you want, you can put this small brush away take out your large brush, if you can ever stop, <laughs> take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our beach. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, rust, uh, red, yellow, white, and maybe black. <laughs> what I'm in essence doing is I'm gonna be putting the ripples from the water coming into the beach sand. That's gonna be a little bit of a highlight area where I kind of ripple the, the water. And then we're gonna put shadows underneath that ripple on the sand and we'll just uh, blend that sand in so it looks nice and natural. Sounds a little confusing, but it'll make sense when my brush starts going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little bit of red and yellow on my brush to start. And I do my waves coming in kind of in a little bit of an unorthodox way to hold my brush. I kind of push my brush like this. I'm gonna have my waves coming in this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking my brush and kind of rubbing it along the edge of my uh, wave as it's rip coming into the beach sand. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got red and yellow on my brush and I'm using these two colors just so I can kind of see the edge of it. I'm gonna be adding highlights from my reflection in a future step, but this is just gonna kind of get me going. And I like to have a starting point and a stopping point so I have somewhere to go. So on the bottom right hand side, I'm gonna come up about an inch, give myself a little bit of a marker and then over here on the left hand side, I'm gonna come down about two inches. I'm gonna connect these two with a really kind of long, ripply type of line. So you can start at either end, whichever works out best for you. And what I do is I'm gonna push my brush towards the, the edge of that wave. So I'm gonna start like this and I just kind of move my brush in a way that's gonna give me this type of ripply edge as it's meeting what's gonna be the sand. I know that this is my this is my goal of where I wanna end up in later. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow on my brush so we can all see it. And then I'm just kind of giving myself this uneven type of edge in through here. And then once I've got that, then I take and I blend up into the um, water above it. I think actually I'm gonna put a bit of burnt sienna on my brush just so I can get a little bit more darkness up here in this top left-hand corner of the uh, ocean in through there, but still leaving my leaving my line so I can see it from for the beach in through here. So now that I've got that on, in place, I'm gonna do a similar um, thought process to a couple of more down in through here. So I think I'm gonna actually put my a tiny bit of white on my dirty brush as well. So I want, I think I need these to kind of pop out just a little bit more so we can all see them. So I'm gonna do the same. I don't want this to be overwhelming with the amount of waves and ripples that I'm putting in here. So I'm just gonna kind of put a few gentle ones in through here. And again, they'll pop out a little bit more when I um, put my, my shadow in, which we'll do that in a few minutes. But right now, just kind of getting the, the structure on so I understand where I want them to go. I want another little one over in through here. And then maybe just a couple more coming down um, in this area in through here. So I've got them coming in as I, as I want them to. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to build the shadow underneath them. So this is gonna be on the opposing side of that bright area. So what I'm gonna do, actually, I think I'm gonna uh, wash and dry my brush as I just dropped my paper towel so I'm gonna get another one. So washing and drying my brush. And I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush, a little bit of black and brown. And what I do with this is I scoot it up underneath 
the edge of that wave. So I can take it and just a little bit on my brush goes a long way and then I just kind of sit here and, and rub it in underneath these waves and you can get it to go as light or as dark as you want. I'm just getting, so I push it up there and then I blend it down towards the, um, what would be the sand area. And you can do as many of these as you want. You can get them to go really, you know, in a soft nature. If you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can back off on the black and use a bit more brown in the equation. This is just giving me a nice natural transition. I just picked up a little bit more brown. A nice natural transition into the sandy area, which is going to be shadowed or shaded by that sun going down so and it's dirt so it's gonna have a nice dark brownish look to it but I'm giving myself these bits of kind of um, shadows behind that water itself as it's coming in so it makes it look like it's got some dimension to it and then once I've kind of established all of my my um, ripples coming in and my shadows underneath those waves now what I'm going to do is just make sure that I've got the rest of this sand fully painted so I'm going to pick up brown and a, I, on my dirty brush brown and a bit of my burnt sienna and then I'm just going to kind of rub it in making sure that I've got a nice coat on this sandy area so it doesn't look like it's unfinished. Oops, that was blue. <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened on camera where I've really just picked up a, a whole color of something else. So we're just gonna take a little bit of water. I will, obviously was not looking at my palette at that moment. <laughs> There, it's all, all better now. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking back up my brown and my burnt sienna <laughs> instead of that blue. That was a little weird thing that happened. And then I'm just gonna make sure that this all makes sense. So I'm just painting and blending it in, giving it some good texture as I go through this process and getting rid of any un, you know type of texture that is not the way that I want it. And then I would just kind of keep fiddling with it we are going to be adding little bits of highlights and stuff on top of this, um, on top of the, the water in a, and the edge in a minute. So if yours is not perfect at this point, it's all right. And then once you've got this done, fiddle with it as much as you want. As I'm going up into the water, just adding a little bit of my rust and brown, whatever's on my brush. I like all my colors to talk to each other as well. Maybe a touch more black in through here too, just to give just a little bit more dimension underneath these. And then I am going to be using my, using my large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the reflection of our sun in our water, uh, in the ocean-y part, and also a little bit on that beach. So I'm gonna be using my large brush. You could certainly use your smaller brush to do this as well. So wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. And then I'll also be making any little final tweaks that I want on my water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first put a tiny bit of yellow and white on my brush. So just a little tiny bit at the tip of my brush and I'm gonna start right up where I want the bright part to be underneath my sun. So I am gonna have my reflection at a little bit of an angle. I realize a reflection of the sun is supposed to go to, towards the viewer. Well, my viewers are gonna be here. <laughs> so I want the, the audience to kind of look at this a little bit from the side. So I'm gonna have mine kind of coming down at an angle like this. So I want my brightest part in through here. And then I'm just gonna use this little bit of paint on the tip of my brush to um, highlight the top of my um, horizon line a little bit. It doesn't have to go 100% white. I'm just using it one to, if I have any areas of my horizon line that need to be cleaned up, this is a great opportunity to do so. And two, it just adds that bit of, of glow at the top of that, um, at the top of the water. Then I'm gonna take this yellow and white, maybe a little bit more white on my brush, and give myself this lighter area coming down towards the beach in through here. I'm just moving my brush back and forth left to right. This is giving me a nice pale yellow type of color because I have both the yellow and the white on my brush at the same time. Sometimes I like to start these reflections with a softer tone as opposed to just going in 
full on white because this will allow me to gradually get to that white place and make it have some dimension to it. So I'm just kind of going left to right, letting myself run out of paint on my brush. I'm gonna use the little remnants of my brush to add little bits of highlights on my, um, on my water's edge as well. So I like to incorporate those, you know, subtle, subtle little nuances when I can and when I've got little remnants on my brush to do that kind of stuff it it always works out well for me. So now I'm going to pick up some yellow on my dirty brush and get some very vibrant tones on the left and the right side of my reflection and again this is just going to speak to this sun really just glowing and putting a lot of luminescent value within that water itself. So again, just a little bit of yellow on my brush and just pulling it out, making sure these these tones work well with the neighboring colors. And if you gotta overlap them a little bit, overlap them, that's again, gonna make it look nice and natural and allow all these colors to talk to each other. I'm picking up just a teeny bit more yellow so I can get some, some of these um, reflective notes in my sand as well. So again, just kind of bringing it in the direction that I feel my, um, my reflection is coming in and would illuminate the center area of my sand the most. So I've got that yellow on my brush and possibly a little remnants of white as well, just to kind of whatever's on my brush right now is helping me through this process. So that looks pretty. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some real bright little sparkles down my water. So I can go left to right a little bit initially, um, but the sparkles are kind of what's gonna make it look all twinkly. So a teeny bit of paint on my brush, gonna start up at the top, give myself a little bit of left and right, and then I'm just gonna kind of tap my brush as I'm coming down. That's gonna give me more of that little twinkly look as opposed to just a full on um, solid color. So just these little twinkles coming down with the corner of my brush. And of course you can illuminate it as, as much or as little as you want. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit in my sand as well. So again, just a little bit of white I'm using on the tip of my brush. And again, this is that time if you felt that you wanna go into your smaller brush, feel free to do so. I'm just using the tip of this brush, but if you felt that that was too much for you, you could certainly go ahead and use um, a smaller brush. And then you could just fiddle with it as much as you want. If you wanted some lighter notes within your beach sand, I just picked up some red and yellow on my brush, and you can certainly illuminate areas in your sand if you wanted there to look like there was some um, some highlights or reflective kind of qualities in your in your sand you can add these notes of you know not necessarily white or yellow but like I've got a little bit of the um, red and yellow on my brush right now and that's going to add a bit of a highlight without bringing it all the way to that white or that that central brightness that you put um, coming down where the where the sun is. So this is just a way that if after your beach sand had dried, if you said, "Ooh, some of that is a little bit too dark," you can come in and just add these these subtle additions with you know, your red or your yellow just on top of that brown and it's gonna give it a little bit of additional highlight to it. So you can certainly play with that as much as you want. And then when you feel like you're all set, we are going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away it's one of those steps where I have time. I have a tough time stopping. <laughs> you can put this large brush away, take out your small or your chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our people. I'm going to be using my chalk. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step because it is easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is on a wet canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and we'll um, kind of 
give ourselves a nice simple shape for these bodies. We're not going to be doing any fine-tuned detail on this drawing. We just need something that will be in good proportion and help us through the painting process. So I'm going to first give you two markers as to where the tops of the heads are and then we'll build off of that. So I'm going to have my female is going to be a little bit to the left of my son and she's going to be slightly shorter than my male. So I'm going to find myself the center of my horizon line somewhere about here and I'm going to go up from that about three and a half to four inches. That's where I'm going to put her top of her head. So if this is about halfway between the my horizon line and the top of my canvas. I'm a little bit shy of that, a little bit shorter than that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come almost halfway between the top of her head and the left side of my canvas. So if this is about halfway between here and here, I'm going to go to the right of that about a half of an inch to an inch and then up slightly. So that's going to give me the height of him. So he's maybe about a half of an inch taller in in my painting <laughs> than, than she is. You could certainly make yours whatever height that you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building off of these two um, these two markers. I'm going to do her first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line from the top of her head down to my horizon line. So this is really just going to kind of start the process um, for us to build around. Her waist is going to be about at the same height as my horizon line. So that just gives me kind of a marker as to know how far up or down that waist is and then I can build off of that. Her shoulders are going to be about halfway between her waist and the top of her head, which is right about here. So now that I know where the shoulders and the waist are, I can start building my building my, my woman. So I'm going to have her kind of in a nice dancing position and she's to the side. So on this right hand side, I'm going to bring this out just a little bit. This is going to be kind of her shoulder area and then bring it back in where that waist is and then on the left hand side this is also her shoulder but this arm is going to be up in the air and then I'm going to have her uh, she's a little bit looking to the left so I'm going to have a little bit of a chest in through there and then this just gets brought down to the waist her head she's going to have some long hair on her so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give her an oval shape and kind of blend it into the neck so I'm going to start here and it's not going to be uh, any wider than her shoulders. So something like that and then do the same thing over on the left side. Just give a little oval and then to and then bring it back in. It might be just as wide as her shoulders or a little bit more narrow. Maybe a little bit more narrow is fine. That's good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give her the bottom part of her body. She's going to have a skirt on later but right now I want to have the shape of her um, rear end and her legs so I have a structure to put the skirt around. So I'm going to have um, her rear end is going to be a little bit above my horizon line. So if this is her waist, I'm going to have her rear end somewhere in here. And then this is going to be kind of her belly area that's going to go into her front um, thigh area somewhere like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of little sticks so you can understand where the leg is going to go. I'm going to draw it from here. I'm going to draw a diagonal line to the left to give me, bring me to where her knee is going to go. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal line to the right to show me where her leg is going to go right down to about her ankle. So now that I've got the idea of where that's going to go, I'm going to give her a thigh, a calf, and a foot. So. This is her rear end over here, so her thigh is going to come in like this to where her knee is. Her thigh is going to come like this to where her knee is. And I'm going to give her a little bit of a calf muscle or calf on the back side. And then on the front side, I can just bring that knee out a little bit if I need to. The, the shin would be more slender than the, than the uh, thigh itself. And then I'm just going to give a little bit of a marker for her foot. So I'm going to put it up like this and she's going to be kind of in a dancing position. So something like this. We'll, we'll put more detail on the feet when we um, color it in, but something like that will do it. And I'm going to have a little sliver of her other leg showing on the other side. So I can really just kind of imagine the, the back side is going to be there. Her knee is going to be at about the same place and I'm just going to have a little bit 
of her other leg coming out in through here and then a little bit of her foot um, somewhere down in this vicinity in through here. Now I just need to put an arm on her. So she's gonna be reaching for her, her um, mate's arm. So I'm gonna be going above her head about, I would say an inch and a half to two inches and then to the left about an inch and a half to two inches. So I'm a little left of her head in through there and uh, above it a little bit. This has got to connect to her shoulder. Her shoulder is going to come out from here like that, uh, almost I would say mid head or mid face. And then it's just going to kind of come in a vertical way up to where it's going to meet the hand. We'll thicken it up when we paint it. I just don't want to thicken it up too much and um, with the chalk and then run the risk of having a really wide arm. So we can thicken that up with paint. So now I'm gonna move on to my man. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw a vertical line just right down to the um, horizon line and we can work off of that. So I'm gonna have his waist a little bit lower than hers. So I'm gonna just kind of see where hers is and then come down a little bit from that. So this is gonna be about where his waist is his shoulders are going to be a little bit higher than hers so wherever her shoulders are in through here i'm going to go up a little bit that's going to give me his shoulders in through here his head is going to be pretty look a little bit smaller than hers i guess because she's going to have some poofy hair on her so i'm going to do a similar process which is just give myself a little bit of a oval type of a shape something like this bring it down to that shoulder in through there. We'll put a little ear and a little bit better shape on his face when we um, when we go to paint it in, but this just kind of gets us started, something like that. I need to give him a torso, so he's going to be wearing a little bit of a, of a shirt, so I'm going to come slightly below my waistline, give myself a little bit of a shirt coming out these sides, kind of bring it up in through here, up into those shoulders. You can just kind of round out the shoulders just to give you an idea of where they are. I'm gonna put a left arm on him here. So I'm just gonna come out from the shoulder in through here and bring it in a um, kind of a curved manner or a diagonal like that. That's gonna be the outside of his arm and then just give a little bit of a sliver of a peekaboo spot on the inside. And again, doesn't need to be perfect at this point because we're gonna be coloring it in. I need to connect this shoulder to her hand up and through here. So the easiest way to start is just a diagonal line to connect them like that. And then I can puff out his shoulder so I can give him a little bit of a shoulder muscle in through there. And then his elbow is about halfway up. And again, nothing major right now, just something to start the shape of the arm, giving, um, giving us a place to work from when we, when we painted it. That looks a little, need a little bit more than there. We go. And then I need to put some legs on. So from here, I'm going to, um, do my left leg first. I'm going to have my, um, my, uh, pants kind of coming out right below the corner of the shirt. I'm going to bring it down. I would say he's going to, he's got some um, pants that are kind of curled up, cuffed up. So if you go diagonal from her, it's about maybe where her shin is, is where I have his pants kind of stopping. I'm coming right from this corner in through here to give the inside part of his pant. And then he's going to have a little, this foot is kind of um, we're not seeing it from the side, we're seeing it head on or from the back. So I'm just going to give a little ankle and then a little part where his foot is going to be in through there. And then on the right hand side, I want it to have a little bit of movement to it. So I'm going to come out from here and then I'm going to, I'm going to bring it out just a little bit to the right and then back in to show that he's kind of got his leg in motion a bit. I'm going to have the cuff of the pant somewhere in through here and then the inside of the pant leg is going to come right about to that horizon line, maybe a little bit in that vicinity. And then this foot, I need a little ankle in through here and then this foot is going to just kind of come down in the in a right hand. Well, that looks like a big foot in there, <laughs> just something like that. And of course we can tweak it as we paint it. And then we're gonna use our uh, small brush for the next step. So when you've got this done, do any little modifications that you want, and then you can um, put your chalk away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat of our people. So this is where we're gonna be finessing the, uh, or the shape of them. I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. I am going to just kind of cruise along. Uh, uh, I'm gonna paint the inside parts probably on a nice quick basis, but then when I go to those edges, I'm gonna really think about where I want an ear or where I want a part of an arm to pop out. So I've got black paint on my brush. I'm gonna start with my man first and I'm really just gonna color in the majority of this center area. As I get towards the edges, that's when I'm thinking, is it in a good shape? Do I need to um, maneuver a little bit? Like on this right hand side, maybe I want this to look like it's fabric and it's got some shape to it so I can just kind of pull it out. I like to also use a little bit of moisture on my brush so I've got a little bit of water on my brush as well and then maybe maybe his shirt is kicking out a little bit at the edge and then I just kind of pull it in. And if I find that there's an area where I have chalk mark that I don't want to bring my paint all the way out there, I can leave it. I don't need to um, I don't need to color all the way to the edges because I can always erase that chalk with a little bit of water. So don't feel that you have to, um, that you're forced to bring it all the way to that chalk mark. If there's something there that you don't like, you just leave it and erase it with um, water later. So I'm going to come over here to do his shoulder area. So I'm just watching where my, where my chalk mark is. I'm going to see if that looks like a natural shape to me. Maybe I just pull it out just a little bit more, give him a little bit more of a shoulder. And then as I come down in through here, I'm just thinking wrinkled shirt perhaps, maybe there's a little bit of bumps on his um, arm. And then we've got his elbow somewhere around where his waist would be. So that's gonna be the elbow in through there. And then I can just kind of bring this down for his arm to maybe be just resting on his hip or something. Maybe this shirt bumps out a little bit in through there and then just kind of color in this inside part of the arm. And it doesn't have to be perfect. What I'm just looking for is something that looks like it's got a believable shape to it um, and that it's proportionate to his to his frame. You know, if you want it to want him to be taller or shorter, you can certainly feel free to manipulate him as much as you want in order to get him to look like somebody you know or somebody you want to know. <laughs> so I'm gonna go all the way up to the head and through here this is where I'm gonna just kind of um, sit back and give it some thought. I want a little bit of an ear on this left hand side. So first I'm just gonna kind of give myself my basic shape for his head like this and then maybe I'll just pop an ear out maybe right about in through here. And I don't need anything major, just a little ear. And if I did it too big, I could always make the head a little bit bigger to compensate for an ear that might have gone a little bit large on me or anything along that line. And then on this right hand side, maybe we've got a little bit of a jaw of sorts over on the right hand side of that, um, of the face. This is gonna kind of just naturally go into the shoulder area in through here. And then I'll just kind of close off the top of his head. And then once I've got it closed off, I'd, you know, step back from it and see if it looks natural to me. And if not, I would make any little adjustments. I'm just going for silhouettes here. I don't need a lot of detail. I'm just, again, looking for something that's gonna look pretty, pretty natural. I'm gonna go ahead and do his arm in through here so just kind of starting with my diagonal line and then I shape it the way that I think it would be natural so I think they're going to be clasping hands up in through here so I'll make a little bit of a kind of a fist type of shape give that wrist in through here I'm thinking he's probably got a little bit of a forearm type of muscle so that'll come um, for uh, wider as it gets towards that um, elbow and then it'll get more narrow at the elbow something like this and then maybe he's got a pretty big bicep coming in through here and then again you know when I when I do this 
I, you know, I'm thinking of these body parts as I'm, as I'm painting this, but after I'm done painting and if I step back and something looks a little off to me, I will definitely adjust it. This is going to be his shoulder in through here. So, you know, you're not, you're not stuck. Just know that you can always, you can always paint over it. You can always adjust things. So just know that there's always room for modification if it doesn't look exactly the way that you had anticipated or if you feel that it needs to have a little bit different shape to it. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I'm going to have to step back from it after I'm done to see if it looks totally right, but it's looking good from my angle. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the pants. So the pants, I'm just going to kind of come down give myself a uh, you know pretty straight pant leg i'm going to put a little cuff on the bottom and then just give them a little bit of movement maybe a little bit of ripple down the side of them like they're you know like they're not stuck to his leg so much like they've got a little bit of you know parts coming out or you know whatever the case may be and then i've got this leg in through here and again just kind of rippling it down the side going to bump it out where that knee is and then bring it back down in what seems to be a natural kind of way for me visually. Maybe this has got a little calf muscle in through there and then I'll give the bottom edge of the pants like this. And then when I get to his feet, I'm thinking ankles. So I've got like, like his pants are kind of um, pulled up a little bit. So he's got that ankle in through there, maybe the little um, shin bone or ankle bones right in through there and then he's got his foot coming out like this again I feel like we're just kind of seeing it from the front or from the back and then this one I feel we're gonna see it from the side so we've got his ankle in through there he's got his um, heel then his foot and then maybe his little toe and as I'm doing this you can see I'm, I'm kind of staying away from my um, my chalk mark because I, I don't feel that the chalk mark was 100% natural looking so I can just steer it in whatever way I feel looks a little bit more natural and then that's looking pretty good to me again I'll probably step back from it after after it dries and see if there's anything more I want to do and I'm envisioning them wearing no shoes because <laughs> they're on the beach dancing so they probably are not wearing shoes so i'm going to go on to her now and again i'm just doing her body i'll do her clothing um in a minute but right now just gonna go ahead and do her body so the center area i can really just color in with my with my black paint and not give too much care to it i want to give her 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 shape for her rear end and again she's in motion so if her, if yours looks a little bit different than mine that's okay it can totally morph maybe you want your girl to be taller or have less hair or more hair or shorter whatever works for you is totally fine she's got her chest her tummy in through there and then again I'm gonna have a big dress flowy kind of dress on her but right now I just want that shape in order to give me structure underneath the dress that's the way that you'll make it look the most believable if you can have um, if you know where all those body parts are the clothing will be the clothing will work its way around those pieces and then it becomes a more believable um, painting for the for the viewer to understand. And then again, just kind of giving her, this looks like this leg is gonna grow a little bit on me, which is totally fine. And then I'll just put this other leg, just gotta make sure this other leg works. I think I wanna do it somewhere in through here. I'm gonna have another little part behind there, but that's what I need in order to make it look natural because it wasn't looking natural to me with that back leg. And then I'll put her her ankle on in through here she's got a little foot the heel part and again she's in motion so this can this can look a little skewed it can have a little bit of warpiness to it but um, just 
whatever works for you and you just kind of keep tweaking it until it looks believable. And then this foot, they're both gonna be off the ground a little bit. So she's kind of in, in mid dance motion for us. So there's her little foot and maybe her little toe is coming out like this. And we can always hide stuff too with highlights and shadows and all that good stuff. Maybe this needs to come down a little bit. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do her head and her arm. And you can see, I didn't do this in a specific order as far as coloring it in. You could work from the top and work your way down, whatever, you know, order seems to uh, bode well for your, your construction process, that's totally fine. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give her an arm. This arm has to look like it naturally kind of goes into her shoulder, so I gotta, build out her shoulder there and then just make sure it's thick enough as it enters the body a lot of times you'll see people do the stick just goes right into the body and it doesn't get wider at that shoulder for some reason so just make sure that you give a little bit of width in through there and maybe she's got a little bit of a bicep too and again if something goes wrong we can hide it with hair we can hide it with whatever you want and then again for the hand i'm just having them kind of clasping their hands together so they i just am looking making it look like there's a little bit of a fist of sorts up and through there and then i'm just going to kind of give her a bit of a forearm so i can get away with just maybe pushing my brush a little bit harder for hers so hers looks a little bit more slender than his just making sure she's got enough of an elbow to support um, her arm in through here too. And again, like I said, once I've got this on here, I'll step back from it and make sure that it looks um, the way that I want it to. And then once I've got this on, I am gonna put the silhouette of her hair. I'm gonna do her skirt in a different step, but her hair I kinda wanna get on now. I'm gonna be using um, my small brush too and black paint, and I'm gonna be just kinda doing these really um, motion type of line. So I'm going to have her with a lot of long hair. It's going to come off this left hand side. I want it to look like she's in, she's spinning right now. So I'm going to get it to kind of come off the side of her head and down in f or along the side of her body into here coming pretty much down to her waist. I'm using water on my brush so it can look a little transparent or translucent. And then as it comes around this backside, I want it to look like it's coming off the head and just spinning around. Like I want her to look like she is totally in motion. So I'm just giving it a lot of movement. You can have yours again, longer or shorter, whatever is working for you. You can have it wavy looking. Um, so just have fun with this. And then once you've got her hair on here and you've got their shapes the way that you want them to be, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our people and their shadows. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black, white, and yellow. And if I feel I wanna use any other colors, I will and I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna put her dress on. So I want her dress to be almost looking like it's transparent and it's like this nice flowy fabric that is a little see-through and we're catching some of the colors behind it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take some of my black and I'm gonna add some water to it because I want it to be really see-through to start so I can get the shape of this dress on here without overdoing it and coloring over everything that I had already done. So I just have some um, watered down black paint on my small brush and I want this dress to look like it's really just taking on the movement of her spinning. So I'm gonna come down from her waist and I'm gonna have it kind of bump out over here and then it's gonna come down across her knees and be flowing behind her and it's got air underneath it, so it's nice and fun and, and flowy. So I've got it coming out over in through here, and then maybe it's got some air under it, and it's coming out by him, and then it's gonna come, you can color it in as you go too. I'm gonna bring it down over in through here. I think I wanna mark myself so I 
kind of know where I'm headed. So I'm going to come below my below my sun and to the right a little bit. I really want this to be a nice long flowy dress. So I've got that marked out. So I'm kind of come, come back from her rear end and maybe just kind of come down in through this direction. And then I'll get these two to give a little bit of wave in through here as if it's got lots of lots of movement in it. And then I'm going to take that watered down uh, black and just kind of fill this in with um, not a solid color, just kind of letting my brush move in the direction that I feel the fabric is moving. And once I've got this on here, I will start picking up a little bit of the unwatered black paint and put a little bit of darker areas in it as well so that way it'll give it I've got my transparency now what I want to do is add um, a little bit more dimension to it so now I've got black on my brush it has a little bit of water but not a lot and this is going to help me to give the um, the fullness of the skirt I'm giving um, bringing it out along those edges. And I'm using just kind of a streaking type of brush stroke to allow for it to have those dark spots and light spots and really feel and look like it's fabric. And it's gonna be darker and more concentrated as it's coming off of her body because I feel that the body would kind of be um, making it look like it's more concentrated and darker. And then as it moves towards the edges, I'm gonna get it to go have, show more of that transparency throughout it. So this again is just a nice fun way to add a dimensional element without doing a ton of work. You know, we're, we're showing that this beautiful dress that she's wearing is being lifted by the, the, the motion that she is in and then it's taking on some of the light from um, behind it in a nice, carefree kind of way and you can put as much darkness in it as you want if something goes wrong you can always just make the skirt black too it doesn't have to have all this transparency in it that I'm putting in it you can certainly just come and make yours black if that is where you want to take yours and then while I've got the black on my brush I'm going to be doing their shadows so the sun is really low so their shadows are going to be super duper long and they are going to be in the direction of the sun so if her body is you know here and the sun is there her shadow is really long and it's going to be coming in this direction so i've got my black with a little bit of water on my brush i'm going to start with her feet i i have her feet um, all of these uh, shadows are going to be elongated too so this foot is going to be off of the ground so this is going to be her tippy toe and then I'm going to have maybe her heel is way over here and you'll see as I do these um, shadows that they are super duper elongated because that I feel that they would be because the sun is so low I've got the crook of her leg in through here is kind of going in that direction so I'm just giving it a little bit of a bend something like that we've got maybe her calf muscle too is somewhere in through here and again I'm really just giving these super long shadows this one her foot is off the ground a little bit as well and then we've got her heel and her heels got to come maybe a little bit shy of where the other one is and again it's a long skewed kind of um, shadow their knees are going to kind of meet somewhere so maybe somewhere around here in the shadow is where I'll have those um, the the gap closed and then I'm she's got her um, legs would be in this shadow a little bit so somewhere in through here and then I'll just have a very carefree um, shadow of her dress just flowing flowing down something like this and then I'm just going to really have a, a messy kind of shadow because it's on the um, on the sand so it's going to take on some high spots and low spots and just as long as I've got something in a similar shape that makes sense to to me with the with the elongation of the um, the sun being so low so that works for me and I'm going to do his now too so I've got his feet we've got his this one kind of coming out in almost 
this direction and then this one I think is going to be a little bit like this and we've got the heel is going to be really pretty far back and then I've got his knee is popped out a little bit and his knee I'm going to put somewhere where hers were so maybe somewhere around here so I've got this maybe kind of coming out to the um, to the bottom of my canvas a little bit and then I think we're going to just kind of bring this up keeping that gap between the legs that we see in through there and then just bring this over to this left hand side. The gap's got to close at some point because we've got that in through there and it closes for him right about where her dress kind of tapers. So I'm going to put it somewhere in here where the gap is going to close between his legs. So something like this. And then I've got his body. So I'm just going to kind of make this a little bit wider in through here and then this needs to be wider, I think, for his leg in through here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's in the sand. They're having fun. We can just, maybe I got the little tip of his shirt, something in through there. And then I'm going to quickly just put some highlights on their bodies. So for their highlights, I'm just going to be using a little bit of yellow and white. You could certainly use any color that you want for, for the highlights. Um, sorry, just working on my shadow just a little bit more here. There we go. Um, so I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of yellow and white on my brush at the same time. And the sun is over there. So I'm just really going to kind of kiss the edges of some of these um, pieces with a little bit of yellow and white, maybe a touch in her hair. Maybe she's got a bit on her on her legs in through here, maybe a little on her foot. I'm not doing anything severe just really giving the impression of a bit of a highlight on the side where that the sun is you could go all white you could go tan you could really um, bring in whatever um, intensity of a highlight that you want I'm going to put a tiny bit up on her arm in through here and if yellow isn't working for you you could certainly use a little bit of red and yellow that'll give you a little bit of orange just whatever is speaking to you just something lighter than what they are right now a little bit on that hand maybe a touch down the edge of his arm maybe over on this side i've got a little bit on his shirt i'm picking up a little bit of black so this can be almost like a tan or a grayish type of color maybe a little bit of movement for the side of his um shirt in through here so you don't have to do much when it comes to these highlights just giving the viewer the information that this right hand side is being illuminated by that light source over in through there and it tells the story of maybe the little wrinkles in the clothing it can tell the story of this little um, cuff on the pants just little bits here and there will help to add that subtle dimensional element to show the shape show the um, effect of the light source so you you know the intensity that you put on it can be really subtle but it will have a big impact as you go through the painting process and then I would let it dry and see if there's any more fiddling that I want to do and then we have one little step left to go and it's going to be with our um, small brush so once you've got this done you can wash and dry I'll put a little bit on his foot over here, maybe amp up that toe, wash and dry this small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. Uh, I'm going to go with my small brush. I think I'm going to go uh, bottom right on this one. So small brush, I'm going black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you can certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be. It's totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a romantic couple dancing on a sparkling beach. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.